Hello, welcome to Maths Kitchen. I'm James and this is episode eight in my 20 week series, which is all about helping you to do as well as you possibly can in your GCSE maths exam. Now, most weeks at some point or another, I mention my website, which is mathskitchen.com. This week, that is gonna be the sole focus of the video. I'm gonna talk you through the website from start to finish, show you all the features on there and the ways that you can use it to maximum effect. So if this is your first visit to the site, the first thing you're going to want to do is to carry out an assessment. So you click on there and then enter your information here. So let's say that I'm a year 11. I'm doing the foundation tier. I'm hoping for a grade five. And if you've recently done a mock, you can put the grade in there. That's really helpful if you've got that. Let's say I've recently done a mock and I've got a grade three. How much time do I have? Let's say I just want to do 10 minutes. Now, I would encourage you to sign up because if you do that, then it records all the work and the questions that you've completed. So I'm going to sign up using my email. So you've got a number of questions to work through. I'm going to quickly go through these. Now, if you're stuck on a question, it's fine to say you don't know, and it will just move you on to the next question. Other questions, you'll be offered help if you don't know, and you can choose to look at the solution there. Once you finish the assessment, if you click on your progress, that takes you to this page. I call this a debrief page where it shows you how well you did on all of those questions and it gives you an approximate grade for those questions that you just answered correctly at the top here. So the average for the questions that I got correct was a grade three for that batch of questions. Where you got questions wrong, as you can see for question two here, you've got three options. You can either go back and redo the question. You can try another similar question or you can have a look at a lesson and then have a go at some of the questions. If you click on lesson, you're going to see a video here. So you can watch that and then you should be able to answer the question. If you've done those, you will have the option to keep practicing more of those. Or if you click move on, it will take you back to the screen and you can see the grade has increased there. If you're happy with that, you can click continue and it takes you to the progress page. So this page is really the hub of the whole thing. This is where all the really important stuff happens and it can be broken down into two broad categories. The first is it displays information about work that you've done so far and the progress that you've made so far. And then the second thing is it can help you to choose what work you should do from here. So let's look in more detail at that. First off, this large graph here is showing us that we have made 8% progress towards our target of the grade five and that if we complete five skills, will be at the next milestone, which is 10%, and then it'll be 20%, 30%, and so on. The total number of marks for the questions that we've answered is four. Now, not only is this showing us the work we've done, we can also interact with it, and we can use this to choose which questions we want to work on. This large gray area in the middle represents all the questions that we haven't yet seen. This green area represents questions that we've successfully done. And this small red area is questions that we've done but that we've made mistakes on. And you can click on any of those. So if I click on this red chunk at the end, this area here is now populated with questions that we've previously done but that we've got wrong. And you can choose to work on any of these individually. So you can go and see some questions for angles in polygons, for example, or you can watch a lesson first on angles in polygons, or you can just dive straight in, click here, and that will give you a mixture of questions. Scrolling back up then, you can do the same thing for this right-hand graph as well. And this is broken down by level. So here, we've got all the questions that we haven't yet seen that are grade three. So you can click on that. The list down here is populated with grade three questions that you haven't done yet. Similarly, these are grade three questions that you have done. And you can click on that and you can go and do some of those again if you like. Or what else have we got? So here, grade four questions that you've done but made mistakes on. There's only that one, angles in polygons. So you can choose what work you want to do based on those criteria, but you can let us make all of those decisions for you. If you go to our suggestion, these are the things that we think are the most valuable for you to be working on next. And if you want to get just a selection of these, click here and that will take you to a selection of those questions. And you can work through those questions just as you did in the assessment. The only other thing I want to show you is the topics page. So the topics page can be arranged by grade, level of difficulty, or by area. We've got all the algebra stuff, then all the geometry stuff. Or if you know the subject that it is you're looking for, 
you can just type that in the search bar and it will come up with all the things that contain that text. You've also got these additional ways that you can filter out the information. So I just want, for example, grade five algebra questions. There we go. Those are all the grade five algebra topics. And you can just choose to select whichever one you want. When you select one of those, you will either get the option to do some mixed questions or see a lesson, or you'll see a screen like this where the topic has been broken down into all the different parts and you can see a lesson on each of the individual parts and questions on each specific part of that topic. Or a really, really useful feature, if you want to identify where it is that you're stuck but you're not quite sure, if you go for key questions, we will give you questions that break down all the key skills for that particular topic so that we can see and we can tell you where it is you need help there. So if you're ever on the site, you're not sure what to do, you have two options. You can either just go back to the progress page and you can follow our suggestions here or choose your own from either of the graphs. Or if you're on the home page, just click on daily workout. That's going to give you the same questions that we would deliver from the progress page. The assessment, if you click on an assessment, those questions aren't tailored to you. It's a random selection of questions. But you may well find times where you want to do that, where you're going to find that useful as well. But those aren't tailored. They're not specific to you. So there's just one last thing that I want to bring your attention to, and that is that there are various places where you can leave us feedback. And this is incredibly useful for us. So if there are any features that you would like to see, or maybe any mistakes that you've spotted, or just suggestions for us to improve it, please let us know. You can leave that feedback there. And if you'd like us to get back to you, enter your email and we will reply to that. So that's how you can use the site to help you prepare for your exam. Now, if you're watching this around about the time when I'm releasing it, which is February 2020, as long as you are signed up for the site now, it will remain free all the way through to your exam. If you're watching this video a bit later on, then some of the features that I've mentioned today will be part of the premium service, um, which you will have to pay for. But there will still be plenty of free stuff that you can use. So do still check it out. Thank you very much for joining me today. Oh, if you haven't seen any of my other videos, do check those out as well and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. And I look forward to seeing you in episode number nine, helping you get ready for your maths GCSE exams.